Hello Internet. Last time, uh, you guys saw me struggling with uh, my build tools, trying to get a window uh, to display a black screen, and I sort of failed at that a little bit um, because I didn't know uh, how batch files worked on Windows. That was a hard lesson uh, learned. So today we're going to continue developing this uh, simple text editor. Ah, there it is. Looks good. Now, all we need to do is center it on the screen so you guys can start seeing how to manipulate, manipulate these kinds of things because the same thing might happen even at the very lowest level of the function for the text editor. Okay? It's just good to, to sort of like keep these things in mind. Um, okay. I can just say something like this. Square.x um, is the same thing as I want to center it on the screen, it has to be the difference, half of the difference between the screen width and the squares uh, width itself. Okay? Just math. Simple math. Let's try it again. There it is. It's right there on the center. If I want to move it around, um, that's also easy. Um, and I do want to move it around because when we have the blinking, uh, how do you say that? Carrot? Carrot? The blinking thing that you see right there, let me point my mouse over to it, this blinking thing, um, it also is going to have to move around, okay, based on what the user presses. So. Um, if he presses up, do something. If he presses down, do something. After this, we're going to start rendering sentences on the screen. Once, once we got the moving square, we'll start rendering sentences on the screen. Um, and you'll be, this will be over before you know it. Up, down, left, right. Hmm. Hmm. What happens if the user presses up, down, left, or right? I, uh, I might want to st uh, store that state in the dumbest way possible right now. So press up. Yeah. Up, down, left. Up, down, left, right. Hmm. I say, I say yes. You pressed up. Yes, you pressed down. I'm going to give myself more screen real estate here. Is that better? Simple stuff. This is very simple right now. Um, but here, we're actually the reason I want to do this is because we're going to actually talk about frame rate um, once you see the rectangle moving. God, gosh darn it, if I, if I pressed up, why am I going to move my rectangle, my square to the right?
Yeah. Ah, my goodness. Press up, down, left, and right. Um, yeah. I'm gonna have trouble if I go over the screen because I'm not checking for boundaries, just so you know. Build. Looks good. Let's run. Notice. Um. Here's the thing. And I'm gonna try and move it. And it's actually not moving at all. Now, why do you suppose that is? Because even though I'm, I'm, I'm moving the values, like I'm changing the values based on the key presses, I am not updating the screen pixels based on that new position of the square. Okay? So, after I do that, I'm gonna, again, call fill the rectangle. Here's the square, here's your new, the, the updated square. Um, again, here's the color, which is blue. Actually, 255 is blue for this uh, format. I said white earlier. Um, and then here is green pixels. Build and run. Interestingly, ha, I love that. Um, there are a lot of experts in the chat. They really know what's going on. Um, but, you know, I'm modifying the screen pixels. But I'm leaving the old squares, you know, where they, where I drew them in the first place. I'm not clearing them. Um, I don't know. This already gave me at least two game ideas. Um, so what we need to do is clear the screen. Or since I'm I'm doing this on the CPU side, I might not want to clear the whole screen every single frame. I might just want to you know, do dirty rects where, where I just clear certain areas of it. But that's too complex for now. The window is not big enough. It's not that big. Um, I will do it in the future, but for now I'm going to clear the whole screen every frame and then draw the new position of the rectangle if it was updated at all. Okay. When Where do we do that? Let's, let's just do that after I update, after I gather information from the user. Um, I'm going to clear the whole screen and again the screen are just the screen pixels and what are the screen pixels It's just a, a, an array of values. I can just clear the whole array. I'm not going to do it pixel by pixel as I'm doing with the drawing because that definitely is slow because I, 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 I would be setting each pixel of the screen to black again and that's awful. I can, that's definitely awful. I can just, you know, at once, in one swoop, just clear the whole thing. So memset is, uh, my dude, my main bra right here. Um, I say, you know, set the memory of screen pixels down to zero. And this is how many bytes I want you to convert to zero. So, build looks good to me run and now you can actually see a moving rectangle pretty cool huh I almost spilled my wine okay ha 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 hmm Actually, we have a problem. Um, let me try this again. Let me run. I pressed right, and I'm not touching anything. But look at that. Look at that thing. It's moving on its own. It's going to corrupt. It's going to die. OK. Ah, it wraps over, because I'm doing unsigned integers. Um, ha. So when I release the key, I don't want to keep updating the values. Um, so what I said before, 
but I only care if the user press the key down. It's, it's, it's false at the moment, like right now. Because when I let go, I want to set my state to false in the sense that I'm not pressing any more keys. Therefore, stop moving or stop updating my square uh, data. Um, so let's do that. Hmm, that's actually not too hard. I can just here. I'm going to say, hey, I now care about two things: whether or not you press the key or if you release the key. And then here, if the key that was pressed or released was escape, then we're done. It's going to be true or false depending on whether or not um, hmm, the type of the event was pressing the key down. Okay, is that is that clear enough? So if I pressed up, it's going to be true only if the type of event was pressing the key down. Otherwise, it's going to be false. And it's going to be the same thing for these other things. Um, I should probably just copy paste. What, what? Okay, yank it and paste. Yank it and paste. Oh boy, I yanked the wrong thing. Word, word, word. Gosh darn it. There we go. Okay. Build, run. There you go. I'm moving. I'm gonna move, and I'm gonna let go, and then you see that the square stops. Okay. All you need to do now is do some little animation code. Replace that square with a sprite. Let's say uh, Pikachu, or Casey, or the owl, or my friend Mark. And, and that's it. You got a moving character. You're on your way to developing and producing an indie game. Man, I've been cursing more than I should have. Sorry about that. Let me look at the chat. <laughs> okay, yeah, sorry about the, the language. So that looks good. That looks pretty good. Um, now we're ready to actually dis display text on the screen. Okay? Now, here's the question. How do you display text on the screen? Um, it's an interesting question. So, uh, explanation.txt. Let's, let's, let's think about this a little bit. Um, I could use an, a library from SDL, for example. Um, I'm not sure if you heard of it. It's, it's SDL underscore TTF. And I don't want to use that one, actually. I'm okay with using SDL at the very core level, just for the window and for drawing. But for rendering text, I don't think so. Just because what it does is something simple. This is not the name of the function per se, but it's something like this. Uh, I do SDL render text. That's not the actual thing. Um, I think I have to specify if it's shaded or not. And I pass in the, the message. Hello. Uh, hello world is the classic one, and then blah 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 blah. That's other stuff. And what it does is that it returns, if I'm not mistaken, it returns a texture. And every time I render something, it'll create, it'll allocate some memory. Who knows what's going on behind the scenes? Jesus Christ. Um, and then it'll return something that's like a texture already living on the on the hardware on the VRAM. I gotta do that every time I update the text. But for a text editor, this is awful. And I don't know if there's a way to customize this on STLTTF. I haven't found any. Like I didn't really care to look to look that much for it. Um. And either way, um, I already have uh my own kind of library for this. Um. Because this is a small C program, it makes sense to reuse especially your own stuff. And if you want to know more about that, about how to reuse your own libraries for, for writing your small C programs, I recommend 
Sean Barrett's talk about writing small C programs. Look him up. Um, uh, he gave this talk yesterday night, and I'm a moderator for him actually. So look him up. It talks more about this in detail. Okay. So I already have a library that that kind of makes this uh, that kind of renders text in a more optimized way. It just creates a single texture atlas. Let's talk about that. A texture atlas, which in my case, it, it again, it's just a block, an, an image stored in memory or you know if it's hardware accelerated it is on the, on the VRAM and it just has all the letters that the user could possibly maybe type um, and then like a magnifying glass I just when he types in a sentence I just uh, go to that place where that class is already created and then just like tell the render you know uh, here's the first letter that you type here's the second one and I just keep moving around and I'm just updating positions instead of actually creating textures every single time and that's a massive win um, so there you go since I'm doing this since in my program for the, for the text uh, editor I, I am taking control of the pixels myself I, I'm gonna have to do it differently and my library already allows for that so I can I can say um, I want to use bitmap fonts and that's what we're going to use for now for this text editor, we're going to use bitmap fonts, um, and again, it's just a set of glyphs, and the glyphs can be, you know, characters, numbers, symbols um, that were drawn. Let's say on the graphics application. On the graphics application, um, and it's stored as a sheet. Okay, and to simplify things for this editor, um, I I just want that sheet to be uh, finite and to be mono spaced. So I for now I want a bitmap font that is mono spaced, um, and each glyph has a fixed width and height. Okay, because um, that'll simplify the code for now, and I really want to put something up on the screen for the stream. Oh, this version doesn't have it. Um, I'm not really using internal in my in my program, and and when I made that library that time, I was expecting to always do a pound define internal, which was a bad assumption. Um, yeah, that's probably it. And I thank uh the chat for finding that out. Poll six, thanks, man. It's probably that, so let's do that. Um, internal. I adopted this, obviously. Many people here are from the Handmade Hero community. Um, when you want a function, or yeah, when you want a function or a variable to be limited or to be visible only by the compilation unit or the file, you can just prefix it by st with static. However, static can mean other things in other contexts. Especially if you put static as a variable inside a function, it just means that it retains its state, so on and so forth. And to avoid that confusion, I just say internal. And I am pound defining internal to static. So when the preprocessor runs, it'll just replace internal with static and all is good. But for readability purposes, people who read internal will know, ah, oh, it's going to be like internal to the file. This function, draw rectangle or fill rect, fill rect, it's just going to be internal to the file. Okay. Pretty cool. Let's build again. We have some other errors, but they're less. Actually, no, it's the same one. Obviously, because I 
let me open up txt.c yeah that makes sense I'm, 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 I'm defining internal after the compilation unit so I could probably just do it inside uh, txt.h itself uh, like that build much less errors much less progress now it's saying hey here are some variables that we don't know you know what they are like at all <laughs> um right because again i probably need to specify a common header here where I say, you know, I don't even have a name for the program yet. So I could do like, but it would be something like spellchecker.h. And it has this, this, these definitions um, in it. And I can just share those definitions, those pound defines across files. Why not? So, gosh darn it. So spellchecker dot h and I'm gonna pass in all of these things this is new this is something we need to do um sure paste ah okay Nah, I don't need to do that. The classic thing though is that I gotta use autocomplete more often. That's pretty cool. And the same thing goes for txt.h. Yes. And I don't need this. Much better. Um, I still can't find some variables. That's fine. Um, let's go in that code. 148. This is a different type of error. People are asking if I have made txt.h available somewhere. Um, no, not yet. And this is actually the earliest version. I have a newer one that does more than this. It's more robust. I can probably publish that one uh, tonight or something if you want to. Um, the reason I'm using this one is because it has a lot less baggage on it. It's just messing with bitmap fonts, which is fine. And it's good because I've, if I only want to have like a bitmap font only library, I kind of need to fix this and the errors that are happening here. Um, so let's see what's going on. It says that it doesn't recognize a few things, a few variables, and I'm going to find out why. Okay. TXT initialized. And let me let me build again and see what the error was. This is old B for build. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh my goodness. If you notice, it says 
txt initialized with an i uppercase and then I, I declared it here with an i lowercase. I probably did this um, at the very end and then I moved on to my newer library and I forgot about I never compiled the game when I made this change. Uh, bad on my part. So okay. What else? It says that global pixel format is also not recognized. Fair enough. <laughs> wow, let me just replace, finally replace everything. So Vim, help me. So everything that says txt initialized like that. Actually no, I want okay. Yes, 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 yes. There you go. Build again. Better. Now I only have errors with uh, a global pixel format on line 285. It says it doesn't exist. Let's find out if that's true. Global pixel format. I don't. Yeah, you're right. I don't have a global pixel format. Why would I have one? Why would I have one? Am I using it somewhere else? Anywhere else? Just there. Is that the only place I'm using it? Just on those places. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't want the global things if I don't need to. Um, so why don't we just uh, allocate? Mm, do I just pass in the format like before? Okay. And I'm using global pixel format somewhere else. Where I don't need to. Format. Anywhere else? Okay, that's it. Build. Okay, that's better. Um. It's much better. What's going on? I have a warning somewhere in line 297. Uh, should I care about that? Okay. Hmm. Why is Bim not responding? Is it because I have a window open? Okay. Stop. Okie dokie. Two. Okay, go. I close this. Go here, clear, go back, and build. B. Okay. 297. Why are you screaming at me? Line 297. Uh, differs in levels of indirection. How is that a thing? Let me close this. Oh, I know. Add a few more uh, utility things. And we can go from there. It's a, that's it. That's the only one. Done. 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 Okay. And I just defined that. Okay. Um, something I might want. Add entry. This is internal. Let's add it. Let's add it here. Internal void, and you quit, and you get an error message. If there's an error, then print that error and exit. Very simple. Don't complicate your life just yet. Okay, which means I for this I'm gonna need 
few things as well. That's better. Am I missing anything? On my newer version, it said I had like a read file. Let's do this. I know I can in Vim. I know I can switch. I can move around the file faster with like Control D and Control U. But just by using the JKL keys gives me time to think about what I'm about to do. It's just a little nice, you know, spacing. Let's do that here. Ah! Okay. No. What does it return? Okay. Let's see how the chat is holding up. <laughs> okay. So for this version, I don't do this on the new one. But I'm I kind of want to just dump the contents of the of the config folder into a string. So that means I gotta pass in this is this comes from the text init function. Um this is getting interesting. C ladies and gentlemen. Pure C. No C plus plus. This can clean up over time. But for now I just want to dump the contents. Um People don't believe me though that when I do these things and it works, I just leave it there. I, I want to avoid malloc here. That's not true. At least that, that, that's, not, that's, not, that's not something I do. So if I make this thing work, um, like reading a config file and just dumping the whole file into a string when there's a better way to do that, a more efficient way to do that, um, I do go back to it and just make it better. But since I don't want to. I want to have a working prototype. This is good enough. And then you you need to avoid like the perfectionist in you to say, oh, if if you're writing like the in the text editor the, the code for word wrapping and then scrolling, but you only limit the scrolling to ten lines, how could you live with yourself? And I'm like, I don't care. I want to see a working prototype for the spell checker for the editor, um, because I can answer a lot of questions while I'm doing that. And then I can go back and clean up, and I always do it, and you're gonna see that. Um, it's just me. Like, if you're the kind of person that just finds him, him or herself uh, doing this part of the code, and if you don't do it per perfectly, um, you're gonna move on and never go back to it. Then fine, okay. But if that's not your personality, then it's okay to do it one way. Even if it's not the most efficient way. Okay? As you can see, I'm using SDL uh, read functions to dump the file, the contents of a text file, to, to a string. I make sure the file, huh? The file size is greater than zero. Do that. Okay. I'm going to build and see how that goes. I expect a few errors, but not that many. Okay. Um, 234. Take C.C. 234. In other words, I need to exit the, the shell. Okay, I missed uh, one parameter. Why do I need a line count though? I'm not using line count in this function. I guess as I was talking, I was thinking of line counts. Okay, so the end of the stream will be actually getting a sentence on the screen. Like I really want to do that, and then next time we're gonna start uh, getting keys from the user, like when he's typing stuff, and then start rendering nicely on the screen the sentences and stuff. 
Um, hold up. What am I doing here? I just need the file size. I don't need anything else. Um, the file and the file size, I mean. And the file size, that the file is an STL thing. Better. Um, much better. I don't see any errors except for one now. It's saying, you know, I can't resolve this link, this function. This is the linker. Um, and it's saying, hey, I can't find string length, SNK string length. That's my own thing. Um, but for Windows, I don't. This library, I wrote it in Linux. For Windows, I don't have that in my pre default library. So I'm going to have to use the standard. Um, and then replace all. Okay, you'll notice now that I compiled, which means I actually integrated the library successfully to in the program. I build again just in case. I run and now it should scream at me because I don't have a because I have an empty fonts file. I'm not specifying any fonts. And you can see that right there. Um, abort has been called. If I abort, if you look at line 315 of txt.c, uh, my library. It's saying, hey, I'm asserting, I'm assuming that you, at least for this version of the library, for you, you you're, you're specifying a file that's not empty. If that's not the case, then you're screwed and I'm going to abort. Okay? And we can take care of that. Now is the fun part. Now we can look for a nice uh, bitmap font uh, somewhere, download it, and then use it, display something on the screen, and call it a day. Okay? A good resource for finding bitmap fonts, I, I think I have a few on my computer, but maybe we can look for a new one. Um, let's go to, everybody knows about open game art, or at least I hope so. It's a, it's a nice website where you have resources that are art related, you know, 3D models, um, background, uh, Images, sprites, and fonts. If I just type in bitmap font, it should, you know, find something for me. Or not. I guess font would be. I haven't paid much attention to this chat. I'm sorry. Haha. <laughs> Incognito mode. Uh, make of that what you will. Okay, here's some fonts. We download a font, we show it on the screen, and we call it a day. I don't want to do more than one hour and a half, honestly. This is cool. Look at this. Nice. Yes. And the license is a uh, common a uh, Creative Commons uh, by attribution. So spicy pixel, thank you because I might just use your thing. Let's download it. Here are my fonts. 
Okay, and their bitmap fonts. That's good. Um. Super cool. This is pretty. This one. Hold on. This is pretty classic for now. Look at that. Retro. A retro feel. A retro text editor for now. We have more fancy ones though. But since we're running out of time, again we can we can choose between different fonts. At runtime, that's fine. I'm gonna start with this one though. It's called the Bubble Mad. Okay. We do have an issue. Look at that, and we're gonna solve it immediately. It says eight by eight, which means that each glyph, each character, or each symbol is eight by eight pixel, eight pixels, yeah, eight by eight uh, in pixels, and that's pretty tiny for my window. Uh, but I'll tell you how we're gonna deal with that. So here it is. I'm gonna copy it. I'm gonna move it over to my project here. There it is. And it says I'm specifying by default that the pixels are RGB888, which means red, green, and blue. There's no alpha component. And if you look at this thing, it has alpha component written all over it because there's not a like a magic pink background. So since there's since there's no alpha component, um my library defaults to like looking for a, a, a magic pink color or a color that doesn't belong to the glyphs. And it'll skip those, and it'll just effectively simulate alpha. But I need to draw the I need to draw the magic pink, and with that, I'm going to use GIMP. Programmers have to use GIMP. They have to do programmer art. They have to draw, not just code, unfortunately. Miblo, bitmap fonts do come in PNG format. Again, bitmaps are just a chunk of pixels. That's it. Nothing else. There it is. Um, can I make a new layer? New layer. That's with the background color. Let's make it white. Put it below the font. Grab my bucket. Look for a pink color. There we go. Magic pink is 255 in red, 0 in green, 255 in blue. Okay. There it is. I'm going to export. I'm just going to call it Bubble Mad and export it right there. No transparent pixels. Save the background color. Export. I close. Uh, Cancel. Oh, okay. No, I don't care. Yeah, this card. And it should be there, ready to be rendered. Okay, so let's go back to the code. Actually, no. Where's my font.config file? Do I have one? I, did I? I didn't create one. Did I? Maybe I did it somewhere else. But okay. Um, man, we're over time. We're almost done. We gotta do this. I can't let this dream down. I'm gonna show a message on the screen with this nice little font. Um, okay, so I'm gonna create again. I need a a, a font.config file. Um, gosh darn it. Why are you doing this to me? Is it that it, is it that you already exist? Font.config. You didn't. Okay. And for my, I have a parser in my library that just parses like config files or any files. Um, and they follow this very informal format. So it can take any number of comments in this way. I can say, 
of bitmap fonts to be used in my text editor okay um and then I just say here's the here's one of them here's bubblemad.png and then I say it is 8 pixels by 8 pixels in terms of width and height and that's it I can say end I can make a lot of lines um, write whatever in comments and then write another one here another font.png and specify the glyphs if I forget to specify the glyphs it'll it'll scream at me and tell me why Okay, uh, a little. It's not too bad. I don't need anything more powerful than this for now. Hmm. Yeah. Let's see if that works. If I build, it builds, and I run. Gosh darn it. It's running, which is good because it means hey, I found your font.config fo uh, file. Uh, you specified the bitmap font, I found it, I loaded it on the memory, in the memory, and it's ready to use. Let's use it. So let's go back to the code and then we'll call it we'll call it uh, a day. Um, I can do that uh, right after I clear things. Where am I? Where am I filling the rectangle? Okay, I don't have to to do it this way, but it's okay. Um, txt, and then is it text uh, and draw, and then I say here's the message. Like a square I'm thinking that's enough. Okay. <laughs> What's going on in my Yeah. Oh, it's draw text, not text draw. Jeez, Pim. You're embarrassing me in front of my peers. Do you see it? Do you see the message? It doesn't skip the the magic pink and it seems that I might have been off by one value. But that's okay, I'm so happy. Okay. Uh let's draw that in the middle though. Or yeah, let's just specify some random numbers. And I'll explain something real quick as well. Um, I don't know. Push it down by like 20, 10 pixels. And, you know, move it to like, I don't even know, 800 or something. Let me not be so. Screen. Let me just center it as a, at least on the text. Screen, whatever. Minus. Uh. 8 over 2 and this is wrong because this is for the x jeez ah, screen with it minus 8 over 2 and then just 10 mm, that looks good to me we build we run looks better it actually it actually has to be times the message um 
So can I do something like something really sloppy, but it'll work? Message equals a blue square that can read, and then with it, it's going to be. I have a lot of ways to do this. I don't need the height right now. Um, we build, we run. Aha! Nice. If you'll notice, it's kind of it, it's kind of small, which is what I was talking about. Um, and there's one way to solve this. One of the ways is. Since this is 8x8 bitmap font, I can look for larger ones. Um, I can switch over to vector fonts, you know, using Bezier curves and, and, and that stuff. I'm not going to do that right now, but there is a, a quick solution, which is um, I can basically say, um, where do I have my dimensions? We're done, people. This is pretty good. Um, next time we'll, we gotta investigate what happened to the magic pink, why it's showing the pink. And I think I know why. We can maybe check it out um, after the stream is over. And the other thing is the size of the font is too small. If I go to spell checker at H. And here, I'm just gonna say. Um, I'm gonna make the the screen half the size. Bear with me. 1024 by divided by two is is uh, 512, and then 576 divided by two is 288. Okay. But then, so that's that's gonna be the texture. The texture is gonna be that size. So my, I effectively reduced the size of my pixels, my screen pixels. But the window is still going to be double the height of those screen pixels. Which means the render is gonna have to stretch my 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 screen my screen to double the size so it can match the screen window. Which means that I'm making my bit my font double the size. It'll look pixely. It'll, it'll look like very retro, but that's pretty cool. And that's a quick fix. Um, Look at that! Oh, this is so cool. <sighs> now let me edit that 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 uh, bitmap font because why is it not? If I edit with GIMP again, I shouldn't have closed. Okay, so um, I am going to leave it there. Uh. For the recording, at least. Um, let me go back to that Vim thing, though. I'm so excited. Okay. Uh, for next time, you should see the, the, the pink away, gone completely. And you saw that a message was produced. Um, it's easy to switch between fonts. We're going to implement that. And then we're going to start letting the user type stuff. And then we're going to show results on the screen with the fonts that we choose. That we chose. Uh, thank you very much for joining me, and I will see you next Sunday at 5 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. And we'll continue making this because I'm actually pretty excited. For something so simple, I'm very excited. Um, programming is a lot of fun. So, until next time. To record that. Recording! Look! It works! No, I shouldn't. I shouldn't do that. I can just mention in the other talk that I got it fixed. I'm patient.